Welcome everybody back to the channel. It is Brendan here at Just Plain Crazy and welcome to part one, if you will, of the painting portion of the 47% EMHW Pit Special uh, done in the Jesse Panzer scheme. So what you're seeing right here is an inflatable bounce house uh, paint booth that I picked up off of Amazon. This thing worked out really well um, to paint in two processes here. One is the poly brush, which you can see that I'm spraying on right now. That stuff tends to be very sticky and leave residue everywhere, so it's best not to spray that uncontained. Obviously, by the name poly brush, you're able to just go ahead and brush the stuff on and it would be just fine. But again, from prior videos, you know that we're going to have some brush marks to contend with. So I opted to spray it with a um, low pressure, high volume sprayer about 15 minutes in between coats. Most things took uh, two to three good coats, 15 minutes apart in order to get them sealed. What it should look like when you're done is no checkerboard pattern of the fabric should be visible. It should be a nice sealed up, covered over um, kind of base coat, if you will. Uh, there you just saw I took some MEK. I found a little bit of glue on the covering and I just wiped that off. And then the nice part is, is if you make this stuff too heavy or have any runs, using MEK will take it right off. So um, now you have to stir up the poly spray. This is the UV protectant and this will prevent sunlight from coming through it. Also from uh, keeps sunlight from breaking down your fabric. And this stuff is so thick, it has to be stirred. You must stir it really well, it will settle. But as you spray, it leaves silver flake absolutely everywhere. So just be advised, again, another great time to put this in the paint booth and spray it. The downfall of the paint booth really was the amount of time it would take to unravel it and set it up. Um, in order to do spraying. So I do a lot of spraying through rattle cans throughout this paint process and that was just because of the time frame that was allotted to me. An hour here, an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, half a day, things like that. And setting up and anchoring down the paint booth definitely cuts into that time. So although I started there, I definitely um, painted stuff without the booth. Here we're applying, now that we have the UV spray on, we are applying our simulated rib stitching on top of the pinking tape to all the surfaces, and we're just using a wood glue tight bond and a T-pin and uh, spacing them one inch apart so that way they look good and symmetrical. Now there's a lot of portions you're going to see throughout these videos where I kind of jump ahead and come back and that's because while the other stuff is drying and curing, I'm still trying to stay busy. So I take all the fiberglass pieces, sand them down with super fine grit sandpaper, uh, usually 1000 grit or 1500 grit on a sanding sponge and scuff them up. And then we just go ahead and we use automotive grade primer and a rattle can just to prime them over. As far as the wing struts, they were probably the first piece that I had officially painted by using some of the silver, uh, galactic silver paint that we had from Tropical Glitz and then eventually just shooting them with clear coat. So that was the first pieces we got done. All right, guys, so let's talk about some stuff here. Uh, we put this out, beautiful, bright, sunny day outside so we could really see what's going on. The sunlight helps as much time as you spend going over covering and things like that, glue wrinkles and edge of the rib stitching, glue, like any of this stuff that you thought isn't a big deal, it'll all stand out. And like once you shoot the silver on it, it pops it. So. Any of the little dust or imperfections we can take out with some really light grit, thousand grit sandpaper, super fine stuff. Um, but really like a lot of this stuff, you could take the iron back over and push it back down now that we could see it. And we'll clean this up and we'll make it look really nice. I can't get it perfect, 
but I'm gonna get it as nice as I can make it and get some of this junk out. You don't wanna use anything aggressive because as soon as you hit it or go over to rib stitching, it'll rip it or cut right through the fabric pretty quick, but it's okay to take some of the rough stuff off. But if you're really, like if it's just this speckled dust that comes out with this silver, you can hit that with the heating iron and take it right off too. But I'll just go over it with some, um, super fine sandpaper on a sponge. I'll show you what that looks like. Also, we have right here, I don't know, I hope you guys can see that. It's a pokey on the inside. We're gonna have to fix that. In order to fix the pokey uh, so it don't pop through, we have to get on the underside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I just took a hotel key card, I put some sticky sandpaper on it. We're gonna slide it in there and we're gonna sand that down. So that's a cool trick, but anyway, let's get to it. So here you can see I got a super fine sanding sponge. You can see like some of this garbage right in here. I'm not sanding through the material. Just take the rough edges off. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could take the heating iron to it. All right guys, no substitute for really good lighting outside. It really brings out any imperfections in your covering. You could see in some of the pinking tape, if I can get that glare just right, some of these rough edges and stuff on here. And obviously as you paint over that, they're just gonna be accentuated. So I'm just going to take the iron and just brush over the top of those and you could feel that it smoothed all those right out. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna look at any other imperfections or any other little doodads. So if you feel like you can just smooth something down with the heating iron, go for it. The other thing you can use, super fine grit sandpaper, just to come across and take some rough edges off of some things. So we're gonna do that too, but we're gonna get this wing cleaned up and get it ready for um, base. Again, I would tell you that this is a very important step in having a model that comes out really well. I noticed towards the end of the build, any little edges of that pinking tape that you let stick up, by the time you shoot it with clear coat, they kind of like curl on you. So take the time and make sure you press down every tooth on every piece of pinking tape. That would give you the best finish altogether. Um, going over and sanding off any rough edges or any brush strokes, anything like that, uh, is also now again the good time to do that. All right, guys, we got wing number two set up here. It is attached to wing number one through the carbon spar. We've done our first series of checkers there before we fill in and we tape over those. Those are still curing, but we have the laser set up so we know exactly where to track right along those other ones. And I'm going to show you guys real quick how we start to lay out some checkers. Going to take our masking tape, obviously the width, whatever you want. And we're going to lay down our first row right here over the laser.
That looks good. Now I'm just going to take two little pieces. There, you can do a third one if you wish to help you out right in the middle. And all this is, is a spacer. We'll take another piece. Too short. And we just lay it up against our spacer. There. And then we can move our spacer down. There, and we do the next row, and we keep going and going and going. So let's finish this up. Once you have your first rows laid out, now's a good time to go ahead and really work down all those edges so we don't have anything bleed on us if we can help it. And especially around all of the pinking tape, really try and work work down that edge. Now we're going to start laying our stripes the other direction. So we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of spacer here on the edge. Just like we did before, we're going to make spacers. Now when we do this, I'm going to show you another trick. Go ahead, because it's going to make all of this easier to take apart, fold that edge over. And then that goes right up here, towards the top. Pull our spacers out. I'm going to put those there. So what do you guys say at this point? I think you get the gist. Let's time lapse it. Now my buddy Ronnie London shared this with me a long time ago. When you paint your checkers, always do the base coat first. So that prevents a lot of your bleeding. So we're gonna do silver first. Now we're gonna hit it with the base black. Now we lay on the Cosmic Black.
Now we're gonna let that sit and um, kind of dry to the touch uh, for 20 minutes before we touch that tape. That way it's not gooey when we peel it up, but it's also not solidified. So check that out, there you go. You can see how clean those lines are right now. There is small blemish there, there. We could touch that up, no problem. But otherwise, we are pretty spot on with both of these wings. So um, absolutely love the way this turned out. We're gonna let this sit for roughly 48 hours and then we're gonna tape back over these and then we're going to paint in all of those doing the same thing just in reverse so we're going to go ahead and get this cowl prepped uh start getting this thing ready for some paint but one of the things that i have to do is um get something in here to support it so we're going to put this in it we're going to hot glue that into place so i could take that off and then uh, that will allow me to hang it so it it dries and i don't mess the paint up Now we're going to get it ready for uh, prep for some primer. And all I'm going to do here is just take my uh, ultra fine just to rough it up. This does have a mold ridge right there. I'm going to try and take some of that out. So there you have the masking. So um, we're gonna have black. We're going to have the raspberry. All right, um, so that's gonna go in here. And then this whole forward portion of the wing is gonna be raspberry. But um, as you guys can see, I'm pretty happy with that layout. There's nothing over there. And there's nothing worse than your camera guy and your buddy Donnie going, hey, look. That wing isn't the same as the other wing. So how do we prevent this? Um, parchment paper works great for this and we're just going to lay this out as a template and with just some Sharpies, make some outlines. So we position this in my aileron opening and then we mark where the edges are going to be of that main stripe. All right, so it's a little off just because the way I'm holding the paper. And then we have the points and where everything ends. So all we have to do now is transpose this. Yes, of course, as long as you built your wings the same, which I hope you did. Um, we transpose that onto this side. And as we come up, you could see that little pencil mark right there is perfect. So um, we're going to go ahead and mark these over with a couple pieces of green pinstriping. 
and we're going to lay this wing out. All right, guys, we're going to start to uh, put in our other checkers. So <clears throat> we're going to get started by masking off with our fine line vinyl. This stuff is only like eighth inch or um, I believe three mil, right? So what we're going to do, and some of the tricks that I found out with using like vinyl tape and stuff, is like don't run vinyl tape right to the edge and cut it because it'll always want to lift. Always extend it a couple inches past to wrap around to keep some tension. And you don't want to stretch the crap out of it. Um, but you do want to keep it taut. So anyway, I am separating the black from the purple. Okay. Again, we'll run the tape long down the inside. And then anywhere with this stuff that you have any type of edge, you just want to run your fingernail through it, like right here. I have some pinking tape, and that's that. Now, um, as far as laying down paper, we're going to tape with um, some type of masking tape. And you don't want your masking tape to be up over onto your other surface, if you can help it. And trust me, that's easier said than done. So what I've found is that I'll put this right to the edge of that vinyl, kind of hold it there, and we'll just get ourselves a couple pieces to initially start working with. It'd be nice if I have one of those body shop rollers that would do like tape and paper all in one pull, but I don't have that. So that'll hold that in place. Now we're just going to get this tape and run it the full length. All right, now we're going to start laying out our checkers and we are going to 
mask over the top of those. Right with this, and we're gonna try and do it as accurately as we possibly can. And we're gonna go this way, all right? Just like that. And make sure you press the edges down. I don't try and press in the center like really hard or anything, so I don't really need it to stick in there, just around the edges. So um, let's time lapse. We're gonna do them all this way, and then I'm gonna cover right back over to black ones again going that way, and that'll leave us those openings. Now we're talking guys, check that out. For hand laying those, yeah, I'm a happy dude. If I wanna get super picky, and I probably will, I could fill in a couple tiny little bleeders. So that way it's as nice as I can make it, but guys, holy cow. I'm loving this. I hope the rest of this thing turns out this way, Whew, baby. Everybody, that wraps up this portion of the build on the EMHW 47% Pit Special. Thanks for joining me. I hope uh, I hope this helps you if you're building one of these, or maybe it entices you guys to dive into a wood kit also. So it is Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You're just playing crazy for always hanging out and watching. Do me a favor, smash that like button. It helps us out a lot. Subscribe and ding that bell notification and set it to always so you're always made aware of our cool content. Don't forget to check us out on the official Facebook and Instagram Just Playing Crazy pages. With that being said, um, links down in the description below where I pick this stuff up. But I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.